I am awake for the next two hours, have hot wings in the toaster oven, and am mostly devoid of migraine headache, which means it's time to pick up Shadow Run that guy story time. As usual, trip fagging out of convenience, not preference. When we last left off, the team had paid Dead Man, the magical ninja with a 5 figure bounty and a 6 figure tax suit and a 2 figure IQ, for his participation in a gang attack run. Despite the fact that his contribution had consisted of attempting to sell the team up the river to save his own skin, there had also been incidents involving murder most foul, pimped out motorbikes, and Mr. Jackson, the frat boy Johnson who watched porn in his AR shades and drank Keystone Light. We will pick up at the introduction of Geppetto, the team's sexy new mage. Some of you will not know very much about Shadoran, or have a very distinct preference against it, considering it is basically a mishmash of Gibson and Tolkien that is, at best, schizophrenic. To these people I say, Shadoran may not be your bit, but to Rage at Awebu is universal. For this run, we we consisting of 2D the channel with the internet brain, Dervish the orc with arm blades and rocket legs. And dead man to that guy infiltrator were alerted that we'd have a little bit of extra help, in the form of an additional hired on runner named Geppetto. If all went well, we could gauge him for use as magical support on the team, which Danny felt we could use. By this point dead man had identified himself with the team as well no matter how much we tried to distance ourselves so we were stuck with him. The Johnson was a Baron's drug dealer, who had gotten a new Chen cocktail out of Anra's lab and wanted to try it out before he paid for more. Rather than trying it out himself don't mix business with pleasure, he was selling it to a client. The job was to oversee the drug deal, then follow the client and report the effects of the drug. The barons, you see, are a shitty part of town. A really shitty part of town. Do you think your city has shitty parts of town? Do those parts of town have walls that separate the gangers from the civilized people outside? Ghouls that eat human flesh and sell the organs on the black market? Snuff film studios. Bug monsters that eat you from the inside out, and ghosts made out of radiation? I thought not. I repeat, the barons are a really, really shitty part of town. Therefore, the team understandably geared up a little bit before they decided to take the plunge. The gearing up turned out to be a good idea, since the team must have killed at least a dozen gangers on the way in. When people have an overabundance of guns and a lack of, say, medicine, food, and pants, shit tends to get desperate. After a while, the team noticed that ghouls were following the step van to capitalize on the bodies being left behind. Smart move on the ghouls part. We didn't confront them now, but it wasn't the last we'd see of them. Geppetto introduced himself to the team on equal terms as a runner, which basically means well-meaning paranoia. Dervish trusted him pretty straight off, as did Deadman who had at this point been inadvertently taught that he could try to sell his team's docks to the enemy and still get a full share of the haul. Ah bad, but 2D and Geppetto had a few trigger finger twitching moments before they cooled off. That's what happens when you stick a black hat hacker and a black mage together in the same room without a proper introduction, I guess. After all four teammates had rendezvoused at the bar in the barons it was a real shithole, although that's kind of an informed quality in the barons. They made to introduce themselves to the Johnson. He told them that the client would arrive in about 30 minutes, and he was an Amarine shamanic adept from the Native American nations. Also, he was a troll. Dervish's player, at this point, needed to bounce for a frat meeting, so Dervish took his place at the Johnson's side to run his security for the night. The rest of us took a table well, a bench and a box, really as a comically gigantic troll wearing shamanic fetishes strolled through the door. After a brief discussion with the Johnson and the palming of some cash into the smaller man's hands, the Johnson handed the troll a diamond tipped bastard had author skin, two syringe filled with a bright, candy red liquid. Nothing good is ever bright candy red. The troll disappeared into the bathroom, presumably to, um, freshen up, after a lot of encouraging. Trout finally agreed to shadow the target, which is kind of the entire point of an infiltrator. But fuck if he'd do his one job. Trout amazingly did not cock up his startlingly low infiltration role, and sidled up alongside to find the troll doing a line of coke off of a dirty toilet seat. The troll then proceeded to produce another syringe, this one looking to be filled with morphine, and injected it into his arm. He then speedballed this with more coke. Took a literal handful and troll hands are the size of a dinner plate of pills, and injected the red liquid into his other arm. This was when we began to suspect that the night was going to get eventful. I can probably get to the part where we, um, got rid of Trout, at the very least, tonight. From that point on, 
The stories are less Shador and that guy story time than just Shador and story time. 2D ran to get the truck warmed up as Geppetto popped in the back. Dead man followed the troll out, and then the team vehicular shadowed the troll down the dirt road. The troll seemed to be getting more and more excited, his face slowly contorting in a manic grin as he hummed chippily to himself. His steps picked up pace as he began jogging with an almost dancing spring. This all changed when the troll was accosted by two AK wielding gangers who wanted his fancy leather jackets. With one swing, the troll's fist went literally clean through a gang's torso. Like, his ribcage caved in one blow, then all his internal organs, then his spine. With a ganger dangling from one arm, the troll then grabbed the other by the neck and began to eat his face in long, messy bites. Shaking his jowls back and forth like a dog and trailing face meat and eyeball goo everywhere. 2D was the first to speak, and he spoke well. Jesus flipping shit dicks. Moving like a puppet with its strings attached to a bottle rocket, the troll hurled himself bodily in the direction of a nearby slum, frothing violently and trailing blood some his own. Some the gangers from every orifice on his face. His vocalizations quickly went from meter human to animal, and he screeched like some ancient, majestic ape as he crashed through a shanty town and landed on a gigantic, troll-sized motorbike. As he drew a combat axe from the side of the motorbike and revved its engines, Geppetto screeched for 2D to drive, Mythifica drive. 2D did not need further encouragement. The troll burst out of the shanty town at top speed, swinging his combat axe at random passers-by with the force of a Mack truck. Dismembered body parts flew about the barrens to the tune of motorcycle engines and human anguish, marking a marginally more violent day than usual as far as the neighborhood is concerned. 2D took a brief moment to look at the orc's trajectory, and then his face paled. He's headed right for downtown. If you could imagine the whole next segment set by the yakety sax or motorhead's ace of spades, that'd be great. 2D stuck his machine sprite the same one from the Bojack gunfight earlier. He'd registered it in charge of driving, and began focusing on the troll's nodes. It turned out the adept was also pretty heavily cybered, and moreover had an implanted comb link that networked to a bunch of his implants. Idiot move, and if push came to shove 2D could probably capitalize on it. With the team freed up from driving, they could freely take in the situation at hand. Dead man what? Geppetto move hacker fucking move the truck. 2D rr I'm going as fast as I can oh balls oh man oh shit it's not my fault this piece of shit can't go as fast as Cockazilla's motorcycle. Geppetto is that a lone star siren? 2D no pigs. No. Stay away. Geppetto you cannot save them now. Keep your distance. 2D what the fuck those cruisers have bulletproof glass you can't punch through that. 2D what is he doing what is he doing with the cop? Geppetto oh god he's keel hauling him. 2D Jesus fuck I'm going to be sick it's like a Duchess grater. Dead man guys, I could take pot shots at him. If I lean out the window I'm pretty sure I can get him. Geppetto and 2D in unison no, dovish. Meanwhile, sipped bears and made friendly chat with the Johnson about urban brawl, in a sports bar in Snahamish. Sipped bears, rather. Sipping bears would be impressive. So the chase carried the team through the Arcology housing project mall during which the troll stuck his arms out at his sides like a bird flapping its wings and clothes lined passing shoppers. Killing many of them, further up downtown, and eventually on the freeway up to Salish territory. It was at this point that 2D regretted putting the machine sprite in charge of driving, considering its literal orders were to follow the troll at any cost. The troll, you see, ramped off the shoulder of the bridge, and was currently in free fall over Puget Sound. Sprite following. All three runners knew who you. Geppetto's player and I mimed hugging each other for dear life, which got a lot more awkward when dead man's player all but lunged to join the hug. But I digress. So, the party found themselves in the air over Puget Sound in a beating up pickup truck. The three teammates survived. The pickup didn't. The machine sprite did all it could to get them toward shore, but the pickup was long gone as the team emerged, coughing, soaked, and spitting up water. Onto a forested beach that they didn't recognize. Geppetto bemoaned the ruin of a perfectly good business suit as he began undoing his wet tire and helped a sputtering 2D, who had long since lost his combat boots and was currently shivering in a pair of shorts and an ironic t-shirt, to his feet. Dead man's tax suit made awkward sputtering noises but survived. There was a horrible, inhuman moan of pain, and a guttural growl of rage, from deeper into the forest. The whole team, even the black magician, gulped collectively before sneaking into the woods to complete the job. As we edged into a clearing, we saw what had made the moan of pain. The troll had beaten a sasquatch into pulp, and was currently eating its innards raw. 
As it turns out, this forested area was the Vancouver Wildlife Preserve, and we'd stumbled right onto Sasquatch Island. The troll sniffed at the air, and his head rose. His bloodshot eyes locked onto our location. Dead man did one of the few things he was proficient at, and ran like a bitch. Geppetto turned invisible. As 2D began to run, he realized that there was a smarter option than trying to escape conventionally, which is not a Chana's strong suit. No, he backdoored on the comb link hack he'd done earlier, and erased himself from the troll's cyber eyes. Which, incidentally, meant that only the tax suited ninja was even conventionally visible anymore. The troll caught up to dead man, and gave him a little tap. Dead man lived up to his name and flew clean through three trees before getting smashed on the trunk of a fourth, sporting two broken legs, a broken arm, four broken ribs, three cracked vertebrae, and whiplash that would stun a rhino. Dead man temporarily disposed of, the troll locked onto 2D again, this time by scent, and began hunting him out. In the real world, Dervish's player got back to the table, and Dervish glanced at the news. You know a fun thing about a criminal sin broadcasting your identity to anyone who wants to know? The news headline, featuring a helicopter shot of the action, read, Deranged spree killer Joe Gahara and mystery hacker accomplice square off against murderous troll. Devish and his player both had to fight down a spit take. 2D frantically burned out all the cyber where he could, causing physical damage to himself, but the troll kept coming. Just as it was about to grab him, there was a loud zot and, brain boiling out its ears, the troll slumped to the ground. Geppetto dropped out of invisibility in a nearby tree, rubbing his temples to lay the headache caused by the power bolt. Miss me? Geppetto succeeded on an arcana check to realize that Sasquatches could heal, so he dragged 2D over to the furry beasts, who were all too eager to help their saviors. They also healed dead man but, well, healing magic can only go so far. With most of his bones still very broken, dead man proceeded to gasp for air and flop like a dying fish. Geppetto we should call him Trout, and that was how Trout got his name. Trout was deposited at a street dock a colorful Halloweener named Dr. Laughs a lot and the team collected their earnings. In triplicate, considering the original sum offered by the Johnson no longer seemed quite adequate. Yes, it's bad form to do this, but hey, the Johnson did offer. The next run, I'll mostly skip over because it wasn't particularly funny. The Johnson was a yak who wanted the characters to retrieve a Bunraku a puppet who had gone rogue. This was skeevy and illegal as shit, even for 2D, Geppetto, and Dervish, so they were prepared to turn it down, but Trout blurted that they would take the job, so there they had it. Trout for his part immediately disappeared into Everett to begin the hunt, while 2D, Geppetto, and Dervish did actual legwork. The only lead was a spooky as fuck stalker who'd been so obsessed with the girl that he'd been barred from the Bunraku Apollo. Using the stalker as an informant and then rolling one of his neighbors for his organs at the behest of a Tamanus contact 2D picked up in the barrens, because hey, side job. They traced the girl back to a street gang, and with some quick hacking and a request of a lone star contact, 2D had tied the gang to a bunch of high profile crimes around Everett. Dervish, for his part, ran in to save the girl from police brutality during the resultant crackdown, only to knock her out and deliver her to the yaks. Speaking of resultant crackdowns, a very unhappy Joe Gahara called up the team for a pickup, having been shot by one of the many cops that 2D had called into the neighborhood. He had to spend his entire share of the reward on street dock fees and fixing his tracksuit, and lived up to the name of Trout yet again. The next run was the team's first corp level run, and the last run of Trout's career. Danny warned the runners that this would be at a much higher league than before so they should act the part when they entered the club that the Johnson meet was being held at. There was a bit of a fashion montage as the team picked up nice suits. Geppetto's suit had green trimming and G-Dragon cufflinks, emphasizing that he was magically active. He also wore a fedora, designating him as the face of the team. Dervish wore a tightly tailored suit with a red interior, suggesting the power inherent to the role of a street samurai. 2D had a tie that doubled as a small AR screen, from which he broadcast Matrix designs. Trout bought a black suit with red trim and jade dragon cufflinks and an AR tie and a fedora. We explained to him that the point of the suits was to emphasize roles, so he just wore a simple black suit afterwards. But he insisted on keeping the fedora to emphasize his role as the team's leader. The time before the Johnson meet was punctuated by small problems. 2D, Geppetto, and Dervish all bribed their way in, but Trout conveniently forgot his bribe so Dervish had to come back and bribe for him. 
Geppetto and Dervish both had their powers limited by Mage Cuff variants and Cyberblade covers, respectively, whereas Trout tried to sneak a loaded, unshielded, stock heavy pistol past the mad scanners at the gate and got the shit beaten out of him by security. Trout hitting on everything female in the club, to the disgust of the grams. You know, normal problems that runners deal with daily. To those of you whom have played the module on the run, this should seem familiar. The Johnson was a troll, who wanted a disc retrieved. Not a data chip or a comb link, an actual disc. Like the kind you put in a disc drive. 2D the technophile had to resist a snort. It was labeled to old friends, and the Johnson had reason to believe that it had been offered for sale to various buyers around the entertainment field. The Johnson very much wanted that disc, and if we could not procure it via larceny, he would appreciate it if we could at least put him in contact with the seller. The Johnson meet wasn't even over before 2D had identified one potential buyer, an orc rap rocker named Nabo. The GM fluffed Nabo as something of a sellout. He followed the Linkin Park career track. He had started out underground, writing songs about his problems and the bullshit that he'd had to put up with, but somewhere between a million new Ian Horizon contract and platinum disc sales, his rapping about the problems of the common orc had gotten a little less credible. That was the point of the concert he was throwing in a few days in an orc neighborhood in Puyallup, to re-establish his dwindling street cred. Dervish wouldn't be conspicuous during this run, but 2D wouldn't be particularly smiled upon, and elves like Geppetto and Trout would definitely have to watch their backs. We spotted a few ins, namely that there was call for more security at the warehouse that Nabo would be at, and that Nabo's manager had a raging Novacoke addiction. So the plan became to infiltrate from both of those angles. Dervish would join the security force as a temporary guard, and Geppetto, physically masked as an orc, would get a hold of some Novacoke and use it to get in with the manager. Backstage during the concert, Dervish would remark loudly that he needed a comb to call his buddy and tell him how awesome the concert was, and Geppetto would hit neighbor with a suggestion to toss that motherfucker his comb link because shit, he ain't no stingy bitch, and the concert was awesome. Dervish would hit up 2D. 2D would hack the comb link and grab the data on the CD seller. Problem solved. The only thing left to do was find something for Trout to do, because he had refused to infiltrate on the grounds of it's too dangerous. So, we stuck Trout on Nabo follow duty, a bullshit position that we made up. He was to shadow Nabo from the airport to the concert, make sure that there wasn't any funny business. We had severely underestimated Trout's idiocy. You may be asking, how did he fuck this one up? Did he wear his tracksuit while driving a vehicle, making the vehicle look like it was being driven by a fucking ghost? Drive Dervish's incredibly pimped out loud as fuck flame decal motorbike, the most conspicuous vehicle in the sprawl? Shadow the media convoy from about 10 feet away? The answer is all of the above. Trout had been following for about 10 minutes when attack cloaked horizon infiltrator landed on the back of his bike, pressed a gun to the back of his head, and told him to pull over. Trout defaulted to his usual danger response. Let me tell you about my teammates. The Horizon spook waited until he had spilled literally everything he knew about each of his teammates, then stuck a taser to his neck and taste the bejesus out of him until he stopped twitching, jacked the bike, and made for the concert. 2D jumped at the wrapping of attack cloaked figure at his driver's side window. Dude, Trout, the doors open. The Horizon spook got in and aimed his gun at 2D. He gleefully announced. Hey. 2D. This shouldn't take too long. We're just gonna talk about your shadow running real quick. 2D's voice dripped with despair. The little bitch gave you our names? Luckily for the team, the spook wanted the data off of Nabo's comb link, as well. Apparently Nabo had received a lot of undue attention from some other Horizon branches over this little offer, so he'd allow us to go through with the run if we did exactly as we'd said we would. After all, there's not much of a better cover for ignoring a big offer as shit. Runners jacked my comb data, so, the run went down as planned. It's just that 2D was doing his work in AR space with a heavy pistol to his head and a taser pressed against his nuts. And you think you have a stressful work environment. The moment 2D had gotten the data, the agent casually announced over the team's frequency, you now have 5 minutes to leave the building or I will kill your hacker. Dervish and Geppetto never moved so fast. Regrouping, the team began to come to terms with the fact that their infiltrator had a serious compulsive betrayal problem. To say nothing of the fact that he was apparently actively wanted by a cop corp that knew where he was at all times which reminds me, his apartment had been raided by this point. So he didn't actually have a lifestyle score anymore and had resorted to squatting. However, this was all sidelined by the fact that the end of the month was coming up. 
and the end of the month means rent is due. We were all prepared to blow it off since as far as we were concerned, Trout deserved to be homeless, and we had enough money for our rents. But Dervish winced as he tallied up his finances, and noticed that he couldn't afford his next month in the coffin hotel. Worse, 2D and Geppetto couldn't both pay their rents and spot him. Something needed to be done to get some quick cash. 2D, being in a particularly irreverent mood, had just the suggestion. Gentlemen, I have found a way to stick it to the man. Our consumerist society runs on greed, and on inferior services that we are expected to be thankful for. The people bleat and feed from the trough of mediocrity. It is up to us to free them. By which I mean, the armed robbery of a red lobster in Renton. Desperate and more than a little entertained, the team went along with the plan. The red lobster was in the middle of suburban Renton, and had no idea what was coming. 2D hacked the node and disabled the sin register and the silent alarm. Geppetto seated himself in the restaurant, buying a side order of biscuits. The plan was that when Trout and Dervish, in hoodies and balaclavas, burst in to demand everyone's comb links, jewelry, and cred sticks, he'd smooth everything along by setting a precedent of cooperation. He'd scream everyone just give them your cred sticks, they're not worth your lives, and hand over his cred stick first. Dervish and Trout would take max 60 seconds to grab all the valuables they could, and then the team would bounce. That was the robbery, in theory. The whole thing went to shit when a burly Texan in back screamed Lone Star, freeze and pulled his cavalier deputy. The GM's menacing growl when the cop spotted Trout was priceless. Maseka Gahara. Immediately, the cop began popping off shots, suddenly confronted with a known killer of children in the middle of a suburban chain restaurant. Dervish, frustrated, grabbed every cred stick he could, and boosted out the window at 70 miles an hour. Geppetto ran out with the screaming crowd, leaving Trout alone with the cop. Trout attempted Dervish's window jump, which was a little less impressive when he wasn't 400 pounds of meat and steel flying out at freeway speed, but rather a spindly Japanese elf with a body of two. The Texan aced a few shooting rolls, and soon Trout was lying face down in a pool of his own blood in the middle of the suburbs, slowly bleeding out. It was now that 2D realized a problem, namely that Trout would squeal on all of them. So, against his better judgment, 2D hit the cop with a passing hacked on the fly car didn't kill him, just broke some important limbs, parked next to Trout, and dragged the comatose elf into his step van. 2D quickly realized another problem, namely that Trout's blood was all over the street, and a ritual magician could kill him or worse during any important part of the current run. In short, Trout was fucked every which way, and the team was fucked with him, unless... 2D hello, Lone Star, I'd like to cash in a bounty, but only if you can offer me immunity. Why, yes. It is that bounty, and that was the end of Trout. I must say, I'm not overly familiar with the Shadowgun lore, but this story is a lot of fun, and I think it's a good starting point to really get into the universe and get familiar with it. I'm definitely going to spend a lot of time sitting and reading about this universe, but so far I'm really enjoying it. And also, thank God they managed to deal with that cunt right, or dead man, or whatever you want to call him, because he was just dick like genuinely like he, he he was pretty much on par with that boy north if you haven't watched the uh furry story about north definitely go check it out after this but no jesus christ oh there's nothing worse than playing with horrible people like you know especially like such a social game you know where you're actually sitting down and communicate and like you know sitting actually talking to people you know what i mean like you know it's different whenever you play playing a game online because like you know if you come across anyone like that you can just block them but like you know when it comes to that you have to work other ways on how to deal with them which is very hard to do i must say sometimes but no as always if you've enjoyed definitely click that notification bell to set up to speed with all the stories that i'm doing um i'm doing quite a few at the minute which are very long which are going to take me months to actually finish even if i do every single one of them weekly but we'll just see how it turns out you know and uh while you're waiting for the next video to come out i'd also like recommend you check out the discord it's a pretty good thriving community of piss goblins to put them nicely but they're nice fellas i must say and the and be honest with you like see the ship posting it's 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 fucking god tier. I, I love it. I really enjoy it. So, like, definitely, if you get the chance, come check us out. Links in the description, as always, down below, and I'll see you in the next video. If you haven't already, check out my Redbubble portfolio. You might just find something you like. This, this is, is not okay. This needs to stop now. This is cancer. This, this is so much cancer that I can feel the tumors growing on my back. And it's way down heavy on me, and it's not okay.
Can you help a nigga out and just stop this? Please? 